single payer health care, we might not be talking about this, but we don't have that. Uh, and so I think that your comments were um, very important today. I, I know that it's unfortunate that um, Dr. Wheeler and others in the administration didn't take it to the level to come and hear what had been said. Ironically, this gives us a sense of what it might have been like in the negotiations with regard to a strike, uh, because you could be sitting here saying, just don't do this, instead of saying, just hear us out as to what's important to us. So I think this was extremely well handled. I do think we need to move forward and issue these bonds, um, but we all need to work as leaders in the community to try to pull people together uh, rather than help them be further apart. On the motion to approve the staff recommendation, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. I want to thank everyone who came down today. This is how democracy should be, and I appreciate it. On to item number eight, which is the PACE energy financing issuance. Ms. Shaw, thank you for staying. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. You have before you a request to hold a public hearing and pass a resolution for placing a property assessment through the St. Paul Port Authority's joint agreement for um, property assessed clean energy for the chance to grow. The property owned by a chance to grow is located at 1800 Second Street Northeast. The levy in the amount of 120,000 will be used to place a solar array on top of the facility and make necessary improvements to the rooftop to hold the array in place. The assessment has been requested by a chance to grow and will be paid back in 20 increments over a 10 year period. And please let me know if you have any questions about this project. Are there any questions for Ms. Shaw on item number eight? If Way to Grow can do this, almost anyone can, right? And it seems like Pace should be, if, if people can see that Way to Grow can do this, they can do it too. I agree. Pace is a great tool for that. Are there questions for Ms. Shaw on the Pace approval on item number eight? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number eight, which is adopting an assessment and levying the assessment uh, for PACE charges for a chance to grow uh, energy improvements. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move approval of this item. Item number eight has been moved for approval. For their comments or questions, seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Aye. <laughs> that item is approved. On to item number nine. We'll start with Mr. Wilson's items. Thank you, Madam Chair. Today we have an application by D&W Ops LLC doing business as Dalton and Wade for an on-sale liquor license with Sunday sales at 323 Washington Avenue North. This is in the North Loop neighborhood in Ward 3, and this is a permitted use in the Downtown Service and Downtown Parking Overlay District. Uh, this will have a seating capacity inside of 110 persons and an outside seating capacity on a private patio uh, seating capacity outside for 42 persons. They intend to have hours of operation from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m., Monday through Sunday. The applicant is uh, D&W Ops LLC, which is a Minnesota company formed on November 10, 2016. Uh, the principal applicants have extensive experience owning and operating restaurants and liquor establishments, including the Nicollet Island Inn and My Burger. This will be a full-service restaurant. This site has never held an on-sale liquor license before, so it requires that we hold a public hearing, which we're holding today. 54 notices were mailed to residents and property owners within 400 feet of this address. We also notified the North Loop Neighborhood Association, the Downtown Minneapolis Neighborhood Association, and the Warehouse District Business Association. We received no responses uh, for or against this application. Staff's review finally meet all of our requirements, and staff's recommends that the application be approved. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson on item number nine? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number nine. This is the part where everyone gets up and talk about all the good things they're doing. So which of Larry's sons are going to speak? <laughs> Come on up. This is a public hearing on item number nine, which is a new business at Dalton and Wade. Mr. Abdo. Good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of the council members. Uh, we're looking essentially to open up a, a neighborhood restaurant that we hope will be in uh, gathering place for the North Loop community. We're excited to be a part and become members of that community in the neighborhood, and uh, we appreciate the recommendation for approval. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? 
Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm really excited to move approval of this item. Uh, one, for what it will do to fill in one of the missing gaps there in North Loop, which is a booming neighborhood that could use that final smidgen of excitement. And, um, and I, I know that I know that you all will do it well. It's, I, 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 and it's not just the filling in the space, it's also with a really successful venture. And um, having had the experience of working with the Abdo family in several different endeavors, whether it's uh, you know, Nicollet Island Inn or other restaurants and bars, you, know, you, you guys have really done it well every single time. Um, and so I'm, I'm thrilled to see this, this item at 323 Washington moving forward. And the motion to approve, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. On to item number 10, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Madam Chair, we have another application for an on-sale liquor license with Sunday sales um, by Double Danger LLC, doing business as Tilt. Their site is 113 East 26th Street. This is in a newly constructed building with um, residential uses above a commercial mm -hmm. space. Um, the applicant is opening a full-service restaurant with alcohol and offering um, amusement games like pinball machines. This is in the Whittier neighborhood, 10th Ward. Um, it will have an interior capacity of 32 persons with no exterior seating at this time. Their proposed hours of operation are from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., seven days a week. Um, the applicant, Double Danger LLC, is a Minnesota limited liability uh, corporation. Um, Joshua and Kari McCabe Johnson currently have, are the principal owners and they have uh, currently have an on-sale liquor license with Sunday sales at Nightingale, which is at 26 in Lindale South. Um, and we have had no problems or issues with their operation at that address. Um, a public hearing is required because no um, on-sale liquor license has ever been operated at this site before. We did notify all residents and property owners within 600 feet of the premises. And we also notified the Whittier Alliance. We received four responses from that notification process. Two were in support and two were opposed. Um, the opposed um, notifications that we received primarily related to um, parking. Um, this site um, is in a pedestrian overlay district and um, does not have a parking requirement at all from that pedestrian overlay district. They do um, get on site uh, three parking spaces dedicated to their business. Um, based on our review of the application, they meet all of our requirements and staff recommends that the application be approved. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson on item number 10? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number 10, which is a new business called Tilt at 1326 26th Street East. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? I'm very good. Before I call you out, <laughs> please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Hello, Mr. Council Member. Uh, my name is David Combs. I'm here to, uh, in place of Jaysha, who is at a staff training at his restaurant. And this is John. John Yeldon. Oh, also an owner in the yeah. Danger LLC. And uh, this will be a t uh, called Tilt, so it's a pinball uh, bar, uh, as it were, in a uh, residential neighborhood. As uh, was said, the Nightingale has operated for over four years now um, without any issues. And we plan to do the same thing at Tilt to have a fun neighborhood engaging uh, restaurant there. Great. Thank you. So, for your... Thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you for coming in today and for your testimony. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Seeing none, uh, Council Member Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move approval of uh, item number 10. Item number 10 has been moved. Further comments or questions? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? That item is approved. On to item number 11, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have an application um, for a new proprietor um, at the 510 Groveland address, the 510 Lounge and Private Dining. Um, the applicant is 510 Place LLC, and they are seeking an on-sale liquor license um, Class D. The Class D allows um, one musician to perform um, such as a piano player, guitar player, or something like that. Um, the previous license holder did, did not have that class of license, and so today we need a public hearing. Um, the 510 Groveland, uh, 510 Lounge is in the Loring Park neighborhood in the Ward 7. Um, 
has interior seating capacity of 169 persons and has no exterior premises at this time. They intend to be open from 4.30 p.m. to 1 p.m. daily. Chief officer of this corporation is Donald Saunders. And he currently owns and operates the Kenwood in Minneapolis and has done so since 2012. Um, there have been absolutely no issues reported with the operation of the Kenwood since that time. Um, the 510 Lounge will continue to offer a fine dining experience. Um, they will only offer a pianist or stringed instrument, acoustic guitar type player instrument um, when they offer it. Um, public hearing, notice of today's public hearing was sent to all persons, um, residents and property owners within 450 feet of this address. And we also notified the Loring Park Neighborhood Association and the Loring Park Business Association. We received three responses. All of them were in support. Um, we find this applicant meets all of our requirements and recommend that you approve the application. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing and invite Mr. Saunders to speak. Boy, it's getting worse. Last time I saw you, you didn't have the head thing. <laughs> yeah, two more weeks. Oh. Yep. Um, thank you. I'm Don Saunders and uh, owner of the Kenwood Restaurant and working on this new project at 510 Groveland Avenue. And I'm just hard at work, super excited for it. And um, yeah, as mentioned, um, we part of our concept is private dining. And so on occasion, uh, there might be a, a, a groom's dinner or a wedding party that might want like a stringed instrument or something like that. But we've we've uh, capped it at that and don't don't uh, have any requests for amplified music or anything like that. Hence the, the class that we're applying for. So. Um, yeah, excited, and uh, thank you for letting me talk. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here today. Is there anyone else who'd like to testify to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll co close the public hearing. I'll move approval of item number 10. I'll note for my colleagues, this is the 510 Groveland space, or some would refer to it as the La Belle V space. Uh, there was a lot of talk about what would happen with our construction project <laughs> that shut down the intersection for over a year. And what resulted was the uh, wonderful partnership between the 510 Condominium Association and Mr. Saunders, who's very highly regarded in my ward and throughout the city. So we're really excited about this opportunity and uh, very happy you're here today. On the motion to approve, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here. We'll go on to item number 12, the Lind Hall. Mr. Wilson. Madam Chair, Lind Hall LLC is seeking a on-sale liquor license um, with Sunday sales at 2638 to 2650 Lindale Avenue South. Um, this um, location previously has not held an on-sale liquor license. Um, it was the home of the Sioux Line Visual Arts Center previously. Um, the applicant is applying to operate a full service restaurant um, with full alcohol service. This is in the Lowry Hill East neighborhood in Ward 10. Um, this use meets, meets all of our zoning requirements. Um, the off street parking for this site um, by the zoning code is not required. However, the applicant does have 16 off street parking spaces available. We'll have a seating capacity for 153 persons inside and um, on the exterior 20 uh, seating for 28. Uh, they intend to be open from 6.30 in the morning until 10 p.m. during the week and 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. Lynn Hall LLC is a foreign limited liability company under Minnesota statute 322C, um, principal owner is Ann Fortune Spaeth. Um, the um, property, again, will have seating for 150 on the interior. Um, it will also have a TV kitchen studio to film cooking shows or other recorded events right on the premises. Public hearing is required because no liquor license has um, been cited at this address previously. So we notified all residents and property owners within 600 feet. We notified the Lowry Hill East um, and Whittier Neighborhood Associations and the Lindale Business Associations. We received no responses for or against the application today. And staff recommends that the application be approved. Are there any questions for staff on item number 12? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number 12 and ask anyone who's here to step forward and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My, sorry. 
My name is Joe Waters. I'm president of uh, Lindale Manor Association, which actually adjoins uh, the request from uh, LLC. We're not opposed at all to this uh, restaurant. It gentrifies our area, and we're very happy to welcome them to the neighborhood. Our concern is the alley that we are all share. At the west end of, to, of 2600, uh, there is CC Tavern, there's French Meadow, and Blue Stem. And as a result, they have opened up access to the alley, even though they have a parking lot. Um, their vendors park in the alley and block uh, the exit. <clears throat> Our concern is with this new establishment that their vendors would do the same, that they would park in the alley and not allow us, that would literally landlock us at times uh, to have access to get out. Um, also, uh, there's other issues, but we can deal directly with LLC on this. I, I don't think it's probably this is the appropriate forum. But our concern is the use of the alley. The alley has become uh, a major, uh, uh, for instance, huge semis come in and park there in the alley and stay there and then unload their product. Um, the alley really was not meant for that type of activity. Plus the parking lot from, <clears throat> from French Meadow Blue Stem and CC Tavern now come out into the alley and exit. And uh, late at night, not with the French Meadow crowd, and I suspect it's probably not going to be with uh, the Lynn Hall crowd as well, but certainly with CC Tavern, there is uh, uh, beer bottles, uh, they destroy our garden. That's not unusual at all. They come into our property. They uh, they pick flowers. They steal pots. Um, and we're just concerned about those of us who live there um, that we're being uh, squeezed in on all sides. Across the street from us is um, Joe's Java Hut, which also is expanding, which uh, attracts bikers. And bikers that go down Lindell Avenue, it sounds like we are out at the airport. The, the noise is uh, um, it is equivalent to uh, planes landing. Uh, when we are in our home on 26th uh, in the summer, there's if you are on the phone, you cannot speak on the phone. It is so loud there. There has to be some noise ordinance that is being broken there. I have approached the the uh, police the district there and have asked for, um, they told me that they would uh, check into it. I've lived there since 89. I bought the building in 89. And I was the first one to put a garden in. So uh, in that whole neighborhood. Uh, we're concerned that the more that these businesses grow, that the, those of us who live there on 2600 are being uh, squeezed out. And uh, especially with the issue of the alley. We're not opposed to this establishment coming in, but we do have concerns. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Um, hi, my name is, ooh, that's loud, sorry. Um, hi, my name is Annie Spaeth, and um, I love that you used my middle name. I didn't realize that was going to be read out in public. <laughs> um, I am the owner of the Lynn Hall, and um, thank you so much for your comments. I appreciate that. I was not aware of that being a concern. And to address those concerns, we would certainly be working with our vendors to ensure that we were not putting the neighbors in that situation. Um, as uh, the staff member mentioned, we are a cafe, a marketplace, a TV kitchen studio, and an incubator kitchen. We do see ourselves as being a really an institution in the neighborhood. We've signed a 10-year lease, and we see ourselves being a longstanding member of that community. And... Um, I don't know how much more in detail you'd like me to get into with with the concept but you know I think our hours hopefully would dictate that we would not be a bar and I don't think bikers would probably be interested in our food <laughs> or our offerings but who knows we'll, we'll welcome everyone but I just want to want to to comment that we were more than happy to work with the neighbors to try to resolve those issues our garbage and um, and those things will be kept inside so we won't need to worry about bottles or papers or anything like that. And we do have a back garage door that we will be accessing for deliveries. 
So maybe we could figure out a system where our truck would be parked in our own parking lot and then wheeling those things so we're not blocking the alley. Great. So we'll, we'll certainly figure that out. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. And then I just wanted to say I brought bread because that is a big part of our, I'll leave it at the end and then I'll just collect it from Julie. Okay. I'll break a lot of time. <laughs> um, is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move approval of uh, item number 12. Item number 12 has been moved for approval. I do just quickly want to comment to Mr. Waters that um, I'd urge you to contact your council member's office. Your council member's not on this panel right now, but perhaps they could convene a group of people who are property owners around the alley to discuss what's been going on with the alley. Um, almost every um, business that operates in a residential setting does have some hiccups and so uh, the way that it best works is to bring everyone to the table to try to figure out what the best solution is I would urge you to do that and uh, and thank you for coming down today it sounds like the new applicant is more than happy to work with you and that's uh, what you could get out of the public hearing today on the motion to approve this staff recommendation all in favor signify by saying aye. aye any opposed that item is approved we'll move on to item number 13 mr. Wilson Madam Chair, we have an application for a rental hall license with extended hours of operation. Um, the applicant is Magali's Creations LLC, and they are seeking this license at 333 East Lake Street in Minneapolis. Um, they are requesting um, proposed hours of operations of 6 p.m. to 1 a.m during the week and 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. on the weekends. Currently, they're allowed um, to extend their hours to 10 p.m. during the week and 11 p.m. on the weekends. Um, this is in the central neighborhood in the Ninth Ward. Um, this site has not had extended hours or a rental license previously, and thus today's public hearing is required. We notified all persons within 300 feet of the premises, and we also notified the Central Neighborhood Association, the Lake Street Council, of today's public hearing. Um, we received no responses from that notification process for or against the application. The applicant um, has done um, a security view with the local police precinct, um, and they um, find their security plan will meet our requirements. Um, they will have appropriate security and managers on site during all hours of operation. Um, staff has reviewed this application, and depending what we find at the public hearing today, um, our staff recommendation is the application be approved. Mr. Wilson, who is Magali's Creations? Usually we see a list of shareholders and, and or who the owners are. Is the owner here? Oh, great. So you're the owner. Excellent. Well, you'll get a chance to speak then. Thank you for letting me know that are there any questions for mr. Wilson seeing none we'll open the public hearing on item number 13 which is Magali's creations and invite anyone who's here to speak to this issue are you here for this issue yes no why don't you come up and tell us what you're gonna do what your name is what your plan is uh, my name is Vladimir. Um, I own Magalis Creations, and actually I own uh, Magalis Bridal, which we sell the bridal and quinceanera stuff. Um, we had this uh, really nice space in the back that we actually become a rental hall. Um, we've been working with this for the last four months, and uh, this is actually not just for the rental hall, but it's for the community as well. Um, it's really needed right now. We have a great uh, security plan around. Actually, it's becoming safe, safer, so we're pushing actually the bad people out. With the security system that we have and uh, yeah that will be all great thank you thank you for telling us about what you do anyone else here to speak to this issue anyone seeing none we'll close the public hearing councilmember cano thank you madam chair uh, thank you to the business owner for being here today i uh, really appreciate all the hard work that you're doing to expand and sustain your business on lake street um, I'm, I'm happy that that you're there and i'm happy that you're you know building more presence on that corridor which needs more support um, it's it's unfortunate that we just recently heard this morning that there's another massage parlor that has opened up right next to 
Magalis. So maybe I'll come down and talk to you about some of that. But um, in the meantime, you know, thank you so much for, for being a part of our community in this way. So I'd like to move this item forward. On the motion to approve, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll move on to item number 14. Madam Chair, we have a extended hours of operation license request that requires a public hearing today. It's for the Starbucks at 465 Nicollet Mall, and they're just asking to op open at 5.30 a.m. instead of 6 a.m. Um, this particular um, store um, is in the downtown west, third, um, third ward. Um, we did notify all property owners and residents within 300 feet. We received no responses for or against the application. Um, Starbucks has provided um, no problems for us in any of their locations in the city of Minneapolis, and we'd recommend that you approve this application. Questions for staff on item number 14. Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number 14, which is a new business license for Starbucks at 465 Nicollet Mall. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Figures, right? Like the one big corporation is the only one that has the money to put. Are you here for Starbucks? <laughs> we want you to. So my name is Mandy Kikowski, and I'm the district manager of this Very specific good. location. I also um, oversee all the st uh, locations in the Minneapolis metro area. Oh, great. great. So we're really excited to open a new location um, within the downtown district. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you for your testimony yeah. and for being here today. Further comments or questions? Councilmember Fry, would you like to move approval? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to move approval. I move approval. <laughs> approval has been made of item number four. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. On to item number 15, Councilmember Murasami. This is in your ward. It's very exciting. Mr. Wilson. Madam Chair, thank you. We have an application by theater in the round players at 245 Cedar Avenue to obtain a on-sale wine and strong beer license um, to be operated with their theater. Um, there's been a theater at this location since 1967 um, and is operated without an alcohol license. This is in the Cedar Riverside West Bank neighborhood in Ward 6. Um, the applicant is theater and round players, a nonprofit corporation. Um, current officers are Stephanie Long, Francine Corcoran, Scott Draymond, and Paul Clawson. Um, the business plan is very simple. They will offer um, beer and wine 30 minutes before each performance and during intermissions only. A public hearing is required because they've not, not held a, an alcohol license here in the, in the past. We notified all persons within 600 feet of the premises and also the West Bank Community Coalition and the West Bank Business Association of today's public hearing. We received one response. It was in support, and that was written by the West Bank Business Association. Um, they meet all of our requirements, um, and staff's recommendation is that the application be approved. Are there any questions for staff on item number 15? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number 15. Are you here for that? Are you here for 16? For 15? Yeah. Come on up. So Theater of the Round's been in existence since 1952. Pitch it. People are watching. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the committee, I'm Stephen Antonucci, Executive Director of the Theater. And I was mainly here to answer a question. We are just pursuing this to augment our concession sales. Um, the board seeing all the other theaters offering alcohol throughout the Twin Cities said, oh, well, we've got to do that too. So. Why don't you tell us, you, you have a, probably a whole new season coming up. What's your, what, what should we look out for the most? Pardon me? What, what in your season is most exciting to you that you want to pitch? Oh, well, we're open year round. We do nine main stage shows of every, we've got three Musketeers coming up. In fact, it's the one show we schedule for families and that's the one we'll probably start serving alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't supposed to work that way, but uh, sooner or later we'll hit a show that's more simpatico with alcohol sales. Thank you very much for being here today. No, it's it's, it's an honor to be amongst you, especially given this institution that's been around so long. So thank you very much. Anyone else here to speak to this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Rasani. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I move, uh, I happily move approval of this item. 
Approval has been moved for item 15. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. Our last number, 16, must be a record for public hearings in one meeting. Thank goodness there's no discussion items. Mr. Wilson on Zumbro Cafe. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Zumbro Cafe, Inc. is, is seeking an on-sale wine and strong beer license for their existing restaurant at 2803 West 43rd Street in the Linden Hills neighborhood um, in Ward 13. Um, this little neighborhood, no, does it not have seven acres, so um, they are seeking a charter wine license today. They're not qualified for full on sale liquor. They have seating for 43 persons inside and um, 26 seats outside. I should mention that the Zumbro, K has, the Zumbro Cafe has operated this site for um, without liquor, with just food for 25 years. Um, they have been open um, for breakfast and lunches um, at this point. Now they intend to expand their hour to 10 p.m. each day and um, offer evening meal um, for the strong, with strong wine and beer. We notified all residents and property owners of today's public hearing within 600 feet, and we sent them to the Linden Hills Neighborhood Association and the Linden Hills Business Association. We received nine responses, all of them in full support of this application Staff's recommendation is that the application be approved. Are there any questions for staff on item number 16? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number 16 and point to the only person left in the room who lives in the 13th ward or goes to Zumbro Cafe. Do you want to speak to this, Ms. Brennan? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I uh, go to Zumbro quite frequently um, because I run with friends around Lake Curate and then afterwards option go to Zumbro for, for breakfast. So um, now I have a place to go for dinner as well. Because I don't think I'll be drinking Chardonnay with eggs, but who knows, <laughs> maybe. Thank you for your Thank testimony. You. Uh, further comments or questions? Anyone else to testify? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Fry. I was unsure, but based on Ms. Brennan's testimony, I'm, I'm now on board. So I move approval of this item. Uh, approval of item number 16 has been moved. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Seeing no further business before us, we are adjourned.